Hey you guys, welcome back to Lisa and Company. Today we are doing another Christmas in July, so let's get started. So I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, it was my job as the older child to put out the nativity at Christmas. And it was absolutely one of my favorite things to do. It meant the beginning of Christmas. I loved that my mom entrusted me to do it. But as the years went by, probably as with many, we lost pieces, pieces got broken, whether it was my sister and I or our pets, and eventually it was gone and never to be replaced. Yeah. But the bottom line is, I scored recently. So I have been looking in thrift stores for a great nativity, but they're always missing pieces. So when I found this, are you ready? Literally on the side of the road, 100% complete. We've even got the little baby Jesus, every single piece, the little, you know, the frankincense and myrrh and everything. This thing has everything. So I grabbed it, I put it in the garage and I've held on to it and we are gonna give this baby a makeover for Christmas in July. So we're gonna head out to the deck and do some really shaky, blurry filming and get this project started. Sorry, you guys. These were just a couple of the inspirational ones I found online and this one on the wooden tray with that little bit of winter greenery is pretty much exactly what I'm going for. So I'm going to use the Rust-Oleum primer as well as the paint to make sure I get a really good coverage on these. Now initially I was planning to do a little sanding and bring back some of the color but when I saw that set on the tray I left it exactly like it is. I really hope you like these guys and I can't wait to put them out at Christmas. Now this beauty I picked up at the ReStore and although I wasn't sure if it was a stocking, you know, like a lady's stocking or a Christmas stocking, I decided for me it screamed Christmas. Now I apologize to the person who put all that work into those flowers because you did a beautiful job, but I have sanded them off. We are gonna start with a great raw canvas here. Now I'm gonna make a hole before we do anything so I'll be able to hang it up when it's all finished. And then you guys, this is gonna become another one of my reversible DIYs. So on this side, I'm gonna give it a pretty heavy dry brush. It's actually somewhere between a thin coat of paint and a dry brush. I still wanted that wood to show through, but at the same time, I was definitely looking for a nice white painted area so that I could do my reverse Mod Podge transfer that I learned from Deidre over at Our Upcycled Life. I'm gonna make sure I put her channel down in the description box below because she has some great ideas and methods. You should totally check her out. With that finished and dried, I'm going to take these music sheet printables that I just got off of Google Images. I don't even know what music it is. No judgment, you guys, no judgment. We're gonna put some Mod Podge on those and then place them upside down on top of the white paint. I'm just gonna layer those up. Make sure you press out any bubbles because otherwise you're not gonna get that transfer. And I'm gonna leave it overnight so it is completely dry before we do the next step. With this completely dry, I'm just gonna take some water on a cloth and wet it down. No, you don't wanna soak it, but you wanna make it wet enough that you're gonna be able to rub all that paper off. So once I have that paper fairly well saturated, I'm gonna go back and start rubbing. What you're doing is rubbing away that white paper, just leaving the ink left 
on the surface. It's not going to be perfect and you do have to use a laser jet printer to accomplish this. Now I have a couple of places where it rubbed off a little bit more than I'd liked. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of white acrylic paint and just dab it in and brush and dab and brush until I've got it what I want it to look like. Now, keep in mind, if you want to rub more of this off for a really rustic look, by all means, you can do that. You could dry brush over top and just make it a little bit less obvious with, that it was sheet music or whatever image you chose. You should always do this to suit your personality and your home decor. And now for the fun part, we get to finish these off and create two-sided Christmas decor. I'm gonna use this burlap roll that I've had in my stash forever and wrap it right around the top for both sides to create the stockings cuff. This way, I won't have seams meeting at the sides if I use two different materials. Now remember with burlap, be really careful because the glue comes right through. So I used my fine tip glue gun and I should have had my finger protectors on, but of course they were AWOL somewhere in the studio. I think I need like 10 pairs of them or something. When I did get to the side, I just used my fine tip glue gun to tack it down. And now I'm gonna take this cord that I got at Dollarama and wrap it again all the way around. Now, if you saw my last video, you saw me use these buttons on another Christmas tree, but I'm kind of crazy about them and I thought they would look really cool at the top of this stocking to make it look like the cuff was buttoned along the top. I'm really loving how rustic and farmhouse this one is coming together, but I think it needs something else. I'm gonna use this beautiful wool that I picked up at Dollar Tree last year, and I'm gonna wrap it around one of the Dollar Tree bamboo chopping boards. A book would work as well, but I wanna create a really long tassel. So I'm gonna wrap it around and around. I used about half of the ball of wool. I'm gonna tie it off. This is definitely not a tassel tutorial, but it is a pretty basic method, and hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing here. For the reverse of this stocking, I'm gonna use a few pieces from Dollar Tree. I love this galvanized family. It's larger than the little ones we used to find and I just clipped off the pieces from the back so that it would lie flat. My tip of the day is if you go ahead and put your hot glue on the metal, it dries really, really quickly. So what I'm gonna do, because this is really flexible, is literally put my drops down on the wooden stocking and then place my galvanized word into it. I find this works. I find it stays much, much better. Let me know down in the comments if you have any tips for using metal, glass, and hot glue together. I'm gonna go ahead and use a couple of the Dollar Tree galvanized tags just on the side of the stocking here. Now, I didn't put anything on them yet. I haven't decided if it's gonna be initials or maybe a little something Christmassy, but yeah, I'm not sure right now, so I'm just gonna leave them blank. I kind of tied them together a few inches apart, so it looked like just a couple of random tags hanging on the side of a stocking. And then I did add a couple of drops of hot glue just so they stayed nicely in place. And even though I'm not really a bow person, I felt like the top of that tag just needed a little something. So I'm just gonna wrap some twine around my fingers a few times, tie it off in the middle, and add this really cute jute bow to the top of the tags. Oh my goodness, I am crazy about this stocking, but the thing is, I am not more crazy over one side rather than the other. I adore this one. I am definitely having a thing for these buttons right now, but the other side came out so pretty. Like I really love just the simple wooden finish with the family galvanized on it. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna display first.
So I picked up this really cool candle holder stick, but I've never quite seen one like this. Like it is, he said, I'm gonna get you all of it in one shot. It is a cool, cool shape. So I did give it a little bit of a sand already, only because the varnish was really cracked. So it needed that. Now we're going to take off this piece and then I have made some really thick baking soda mixed with black paint and it's a really thick consistency so you can kind of see and I'm gonna put it on in a really textured coat and try something new so I took that off it's just one of those little candle cups and one little screw and we're gonna cover this up so we don't have to worry about fixing it so I'm just going to kind of brush and glop this on all over the place and I'm going to create a lot of texture while I do it. So I really, I, I messed around with the brush and I left it in chunks. I think it's going to take a little while to dry so I am going to leave this one overnight before I do the next step. Now I'm gonna use my linen white chalked paint and put a good coat over top of this. Now my purpose is not to cover it completely, but I am putting it on fairly thick, but using a li really light touch, only because I don't wanna dislodge any of that texture that I put on there. Now that that paint is dry, I'm going to take a fairly rough sanding block and I am going to gently sand it off. Now I have no idea what to expect here. I'm kind of going for a bit of a salt wash finish, but I didn't have any salt wash. So as I sand this away, it's going to reveal lots and lots of that texture underneath, lots of that black paint, or that's the plan anyway. So although I wasn't sure how this was going to work out, I'm kind of loving the texture. It's way more rustic than anything I normally do, but uh, you know what? Different is good. I like it. All right. So here's what's going on this. It's not a candle. I have had this in my stash, obviously for over a year. Somehow in my mind, it was a black Christmas tree, which let me see if I can show you here. It's clearly not, it's black and orange. Obviously it's Halloween. So what I did was I took the tree and I just did light layers of this spray paint in flat and just so I had fluffed out the tree and then I just did layer after layer after layer. You can see there's still, where did I catch that one? The odd little tiny bit of orange, but that's the nature of this and you really can't see it when you just kind of look at it. So time to put this together. Now I debated using a pot or some kind of tin for the tree to sit in, but I really wanted to go with a streamlined look. So I am literally drilling just a larger hole in the bottom of my candle sconce and I'm gonna add my tree right in. This is going to be so simple and so cool. I'm just gonna give it a dry fit to make sure I've made that hole the correct size and then we're gonna use some of the Gorilla Glue Instant Hold Magic stuff and put it right in there. I did go ahead and add some really hot glue right into the bottom. And now using that Gorilla Glue on the stem of the tree because that will give it a really great hold. The thing with Christmas stuff is you've got to remember you're going to be packing it away and you don't want everything to have fallen apart 
by the time you unpack it the following year, right? I just picked up these really pretty, almost driftwood-like wood pieces from Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna glue a couple of those around the base of the tree, just so it looks a little bit more like a trunk because you can see, remember how the Dollar Tree trees are just wrapped in that sort of silky, fine, fluffy stuff? Well, I just wanted to mask that a little bit and I thought these pieces were perfect. So if you've been with me for a while, you know I love winter, which I know some people find absolutely nuts, but I do. So I went in with this old brush and I added just a little white chalk paint to each of the branches. I thought it made it look like it had just a little bit of frost or snow and absolutely love it. It may have even covered the last of those orange pieces. Are you even ready for this? Cause I am head over freaking heels for this. I've never done anything with a black Christmas tree. I ugh, like seriously, when I saw this wall scone, it screamed Christmas tree to me. No idea why, but I absolutely love it. And you guys, I can't wait to use it at Christmas. I picked up this pot for, where are we here? Let's show you. $8, which is probably a little more than usual for the ReStore, but I also thought the pot was pretty unusual too, so I was willing to bite the bullet and go for it. So let's start painting and see how this goes. Okay, so I think it looks pretty neat already. So I'm gonna finish painting this and can't wait for the final product. So I'm using just a baby wipe from Dollar Tree, but you can use a wet cloth as well. And you wanna just wipe away some of that chalk paint. By doing that, you're just, you're literally reactivating the paint and then wiping it away. So you can do as little or as much as you want. Now I'm gonna focus mainly on the pine, count, pine cones, my goodness, and then that band right around the middle there because I love that dark color it had underneath. I am I'm gonna take a little bit off the body as well, but mostly to reveal the texture and that's about it. So do you wanna see how this turned out? What do you think? Cause I'm having a moment here. I really, really love this. Now, I didn't have the tree I intended to. It's away in storage. So I put this little tiny one in, but I am getting such a cool winter vibe. I can't wait to put this out early this year and make it part of my decor for the entire winter. What do you think you guys? Head down to the comments and let me know if you're loving this like I am. Alrighty, my friends, that's a wrap on me today. And you know what? That's a wrap on Christmas in July. So I totally hope you enjoyed these. I had so much fun. Even though I got started so much later than I intended to, I really enjoyed making these. And it, as usual, just makes me super excited for the real Christmas season, which starts in just a few short months. Now I have a couple of videos I wanna get out for you guys that are just great home decor on a budget, cause you know how much I love to do that. Izzy is off to university. Well, I'm gonna say next month, cause in August, and we're gonna have some fun things to do for her dorm room. And uh, yeah, hello, fall. So you guys will see you really soon, right back here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. Thanks so much, as always, for stopping by and your support and all your wonderful comments. And I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed today's video, then here's a couple more I thought you might enjoy as well. Don't forget to hop over onto Instagram where I share all kinds of shenanigans with Izzy, myself, the dog, Bruce, 
everybody and shopping hauls and thrifting and traveling and whew, anyway, just join me over on Instagram and I'll see you in the next video.